is 12 o'clock. Here is the midday news. First, the top stories. Amoso asks separatist agitators not to resort to violence. State Assembly speakers back council attorney and power devolution. Benua says 42 billion naira intervention fund inadequate to clear salary arrears. Trial of detained 2,541 Boko Haram suspects begins in October. While in foreign, top Somali general bodyguard shot dead in Mogadishu. And German Chancellor wins the fourth term amidst rising anti migrant agitation. Good afternoon. I am Chiana Ibrahim, bringing you the news in details shortly. Governor Ibikone Amoso of the state has asked all those canvassing for the breakup of Nigeria not to resort to violence. Instead, the governor urges them to offer prayers for Nigeria to attain greatness. Amoso, who made the call during the Thanksgiving service to mark the 57th anniversary of Nigeria's independence, which was held at the Cathedral Church of St. Peter at K. Abelbuta, says the unity displayed by Nigerians over the past 15 years has shown that the country cannot break. The governor, represented by Deputy Governor Yetunde Onunuga at the special service, agrees that Nigeria at the moment is facing several challenges but believes it has the potential to overcome them. It will be continuing to pray without ceasing for our country to come back to a blood glory by the grace of the Almighty. We also realize that all is not well in Nigeria right now. We do not need to carry arms against one another. We do not The Archbishop of Lagos Ecclesiastical Province, Most Reverend Michael Parfey, in his sermon, says Nigeria is in its current state because of the baseless prayers being offered to God by its citizens. Reverend Parfey, who is also the Bishop of Remo Delsis, explains that the present condition of Nigeria is more compounded by the corruption and greediness of its leaders, where individual citizens and the unwillingness of clergymen to speak the truth. President Mohammed Buhari is scheduled to pay a visit to Women's State on November 7 to attend the meeting of the Progressive Governors Forum in Abelkuta, the state capital. Also, between October 16 to October 18, the state capital will host the Conference of the National Council on Environment. A seminar for top immigration officers will also take place in Abelkuta between October 25 and 26. Speakers of the 36 states House of Assembly have backed a proposed autonomy for the local government to fast-track development at the grassroots. The resolution was adopted in Yola, the Adamawa state capital, at the Conference of Speakers of the State Legislature of Nigeria. The conference chairman, Ismail Kamba, who read the communique issued at the end of the conference, also says the state assemblies strongly support the proposal to devolve powers from the federal to the state level. The assemblies, according to Kamba, are expecting the National Assembly to transmit the draft of the amended 1999 Constitution for consideration and possible adoption of its clauses. Hope of a bumper harvest by rice farmers in Kwara State in October has been dashed as flood takes over their farms. The flood submerged 450 rice farms, spread over 3,200 hectares of the federal government's Tada Songhai irrigated land in the Shonga and Edo local government areas. The farmers, according to Governor Al Fat Abdul Fatar Ahmed, during a visit to the flooded rice farms, says the affected farmers took loans from the Anchor Borrower Program of the Central Bank of Nigeria for the rice planting. The governor pleads with the presidency to come to the aid 
of the affected farmers. Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State says the Federal Intervention Fund received so far by his administration is grossly inadequate to clear the backlog of salary and allowances. The governor speaking at the inauguration of the provinces of the redeemed Christian Church of God in Boko and Mapodi says funds totaling 49 billion naira had so far been received from federal bailout and Paris loan refund in the past two years. Autumn, however, says that his administration on assuming office in May 29, 2015, inherited 69 billion naira salary, pensions and gratuity arrears, as well as a monthly salary bill of 8.5 billion naira. The governor explains that although the inherited monthly salary bill had been re reduced to 7.8 billion naira after biometric verification of workers, and it's still on the high side, considering the salary bills of states like Kaduna, Ogun, and Kanu. More than 1,000 suspected kidnappers and armed robbers are now in police custody nationwide. Inspector General of Police Ibrahim Idris, who made those known as a public lecture in Lagos, says that over 270 of them were arrested all over the country in July. Some of the suspects, according to him, were killed during an exchange of gunfire with policemen. Idris explains that the success recorded by the police in the past months were due to the synergy between the police and other security agencies, particularly in Kaduna, Kano, Lagos, Benue State, as well as in the Southeast and Northeast regions. Federal Justice Ministry has finalized arrangements to begin the prosecution of suspected Boko Haram fighters who are in detention in Marjuguri Prison and Wawa Military Barracks in Kainji, Niger State. Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Bakr Malami, who made this known in a statement, says that a special team had been set up to handle the prosecution of the 2,541 suspected terrorists. Malami, who also is the Justice Minister, explains that the special prosecution team will handle the trial of the first batch of 1,670 suspected in October. The Minister, however, says that 220 of the suspects are to be set free due to insufficient evidence to back up the prosecution. You are still listening to the Midday News on Rock City 101.9 FM. Up next, we bring you foreign business and sports news. Please do stay with us. In foreign, a senior Somali military officer has been gunned down in Mogadishu. Witnesses said the gunmen armed with pistols fatally shot General Abdullahi Muhammad Sheikh Kuruhu and a bodyguard as the two men were walking home from a mosque in Somali capital. The attackers walked past several Kururu and the bodyguard, then turned and shot them from behind. The sources quoted the witnesses as saying, Both victims died on the spot. Kururu was a senior army officer at Somalia's command and control headquarters in Mogadishu. He served previously as Deputy Commander of Logistics for the Somali Army. And one week ago, a similar shooting in southern Mogadishu killed a senior Somali intelligence officer and his bodyguard. The attackers in that case were in a vehicle that fired on Muhammad Mualim Hazan Kuli and his bodyguard in the capitals that currently the district. Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for those killings. A masked gunman was stopped mid-attack by an extraordinarily brave church usher after killing one person near Nashville, in Tennessee, in the U.S. The suspect shot and injured himself during a struggle with a 22-year-old Robert Caleb Engel, who was struck in the face by the suspect's gun. But Mr. Engel managed to get back to his car and got his own gun to guard the injured attacker until police arrived. Police said that two people were in the church at the time of the attack. A woman named as 39-year-old Melanie Smith was found dead in the car park near the suspect's car. Nashville police said the suspected attacker at the Bernard Chapel Church of Christ was Emmanuel Kidega Samson, 25, who was originally from Sudan. Two pistols were recovered in the church and two more guns were found in Samson's car nearby. 
German Chancellor Angela Merkel has been re-elected for a fourth term while nationalists have made a historic surge in federal elections. Her conservative CDU CSU bloc has seen its worst result in almost 70 years but will remain the largest in parliament. Its current coalition partner, the Social Democratic SPD, says it will go into opposition after historic losses. The nationalist AFD has won its first seats and is set to be the third party, a result that sparked some protests. Dozens of demonstrators are gathered outside the right wing, the anti-Islam party's headquarters in Berlin on Sunday night, some with placards saying refugees are welcome. Protests were also held in several other cities, including Frankfurt and Cologne. In business, a major oil pipeline has been shut down in the Niger Delta region for an emergency repairs following the discovery of a leak. The short Nemba Creek trunk line takes 150,000 barrels of crude oil from the Nemba Creek in River State from the end point at Cathon Channel to the Bonnie Oil Export Terminal. Spokesman of Iteco Eastern Exploration Production Company, Undiana Abasi Matthew, in a statement, says the leak was discovered last September 15 and engineers deployed to fix the pipeline. Nigeria's daily production level hovers around 1.5 million barrels in the first week of this month, down from the average of 1.8 million barrels regarded in August. The drop in production is blamed on the incidences at the Kwaiboy loading terminal, the total Aminaham platform, Kolo Creek Rumo Ekwe pipeline, Trans Focados pipeline and Trans Niger pipeline, all in Niger Delta region. Finally, in the news, sports news. Ghana has emerged 2017 World Cup of Nations champions after humiliating Nigeria by 4-1 in the finals on Sunday night at the Cape Coast Stadium. The Black Stars retained their title, which they won four years ago against Senegal in Kumasi, as they revenged the group stage defeat to the Super Eagles. Safo Kwanjua opened scoring for the Black Stars in the 44th minute when he beat Nigerian goalkeeper Ikechuku Ezema for the opener. Atinga Vincent stepped up and doubled the Black Stars' lead in the 60th minute. Kwadwo sent Ezema the wrong way and scored his second of the day and his fourth of the tournament to win the top scorer award. Kobina Eswa added the fourth goal in the addition minute, while Rabiu Ali scored a late consolation for Nigeria. That was the midday news, and just before we go, the major stories once again. I'm also asked separatist agitators not to resort to violence. State Assembly Speaker backed council autonomy and power devolution. Benway said 42 billion naira intervention fund inadequate to clear salary arrears. And trial of detained 2,541 book warrant suspects begin by October. While in foreign, we also reported that top Somali general bodyguard shot dead in Mogadishu. And German Chancellor won the fourth term amidst rising anti migrant agitations. For more stories and to listen to us live, please log on to our website www.rockcityfmradio.com/slash live. Thank you very much for listening. I am Cherry in one afternoon and do enjoy your day.